Hi, my name is Jeff Greenblatt. I'm a staff scientist at Berkeley Lab, and for the past dozen years or more, I've been studying energy and climate change issues. But more recently, since about 2006, I've been focused on California energy policy and its impacts on greenhouse gas emissions. I recently published a study looking at the effects of those uh, energy policies on greenhouse gas emissions, and it's attracted a lot of interesting questions from readers. So today, I'm going to attempt to answer some of those questions, but thank you for everyone who has submitted a question. So the first question I'm going to answer is from a reader named Milo. Thanks a lot for all of your questions, Milo. The one I first wanted to focus on was, what is climate change and what do greenhouse gases do in the atmosphere? So the reason why greenhouse gases cause climate change is because infrared radiation uh, emitted by the surface usually passes back into space through the atmosphere but greenhouse gases cause some of that radiation to be trapped and re-reflected to the ground where it causes the net heating of the atmosphere, the ground, buildings, etc. And as we pump greenhouse gases such as CO2 into the atmosphere, that heat trapping effect gets larger, sort of like putting an extra blanket layer over the earth. So the net result is that we have, we have increased temperatures on average for the planet. And this has problems for uh, the hydrological cycle for species adaptation, as well as other effects that are more serious, such as sea level rise and the melting of glaciers and the polar ice caps. The next question is from a viewer named Hans, who asked about electric vehicles, mass transit, and even self-driving cars. In our study, uh, we looked at all of those uh, factors and actually quantified what benefits, uh, including them, would have on statewide greenhouse gases. So there is a policy of increasing the number of zero emission vehicles, or ZEVs, which are mostly electric vehicles, up to about one and a half million by 2025. In addition, there is a policy which is trying to build uh, high-speed rail. This would be powered entirely by renewable electricity and would offset a fraction of uh, uh, car travel as well as airplane travel, which would reduce emissions on, on net. And finally, self-driving cars can operate more efficiently and allow the transit system to be used in a way that also reduces greenhouse gases. So all of those effects were captured in our model. Warren asks what role nuclear power will play in the state in the future. So that's a matter of, uh, of some debate. Currently, there is only one nuclear power plant that is still operating in California. That's Diablo Canyon, and that's up for, for renewal. In our model, we assume that that uh, nuclear power plant would continue operating through 2045, saving on the order of 8 million tons of CO2 per year every year that it operates. But there is another scenario that we looked at where nuclear power is expanded slightly by uh, building another plant of a comparable size to Diablo Canyon, effectively to replace the power plant that was shut down in 2012, San Onofre, in Southern California. And this would also confer about seven or eight million tons of savings. But we didn't look at expanding nuclear power beyond that point. Karen asks, what about uh, power that is imported from out of state that causes emissions, such as out of state coal fired power plants? So our model and California state policy includes those emissions in part of its greenhouse gas inventory. So reducing the use of out-of-state coal and other uh, fossil-based power plants will reduce overall greenhouse gas emissions for the state. And we currently have a very powerful policy that is phasing out all imported coal power through 2030, which will have a big impact on statewide greenhouse gas reductions. My next question comes from Tim who asked about population growth. Population is a huge driver of overall statewide greenhouse gas emissions. And in fact, in our first scenario called S1, it's population growth that pushes emissions up after 2030 because there's generally no further reductions in uh, greenhouse gas emissions per capita after that time. But uh, population continues to grow, hitting about 50 million people by 2050. It's roughly a 30% growth rate 
uh, compared to today. Um, the other thing about population is that it, there's a lot of uncertainty about how big it's going to get several decades into the future, and that is one of the biggest sources of uncertainty in our projections of total statewide greenhouse gas emissions. So we definitely include population effects in our model, and uh, it's something that everybody needs to uh, pay attention to. So thanks once again for all of your great questions. If you have other questions about this topic or any of a large variety of topics that Berkeley Lab is engaged in, you can go to our homepage at lbl.gov or you can tweet us at Berkeley Lab.